we celebrate this wonderful, wonderful woman of God who we love so dearly. At this time, let's receive the family as they procession in.
Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God, for this day, O God. Father God, we bring before you, O God, Lord Jesus, our dear and loving, O God, Mother Cox, O God, before you. We bring her family before you, O God. At this time, God, we pray that you'll comfort them. At this time, O God, we pray that you'll guide them, O God, and protect them, O God, and be with them, O God. Let them know, O oh God, that weeping, O oh God, may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, O oh God. Father God, we put them into your loving arms, O oh God, that you will carry them, O oh God. Father God, when the phone stop ringing, O oh God, and the text stop coming, O oh God, that you will be the God that they can call upon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we thank you and we give you the glory. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading in your hearing this morning the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. Praise I will read for your listening. First uh, Corinthians. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter in the 51st verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. And this is the word of God. this time, amen, as we move forward with our program, amen, at this time we're going to have a tribute in song, we're going to have a tribute in song at this time.
you. Um, next, we're going to have a tribute in words. And this is coming from our wonderful aunt, Montrese Peace. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I can't call a loan. I'm sorry, I can't. Mommy, as you know, in the neighborhoods, they called her Mama Lois. She was everybody's mama. She will take care of everybody's kid. She did it, but it's up to <laughs> Um. She, um, she's, as she said to me, I lived my life, I had a good life, and it's, it's done. She's moving on. Um, some people want to know that because mommy is a deaconess, why we didn't have it in the church. She stated, don't take me back and forth. I don't need to be traveling. I'm already on a journey to those pearly gates. Amen. Okay, so this is why we're keeping it at the funeral home. She said she wasn't traveling. And she was on her way. Since mommy passed, there's been a number of things that happened, <laughs> which is strange. We had an earthquake. You could not tell me that those six kids and their parents after almost 75 years have gotten back together and they met them at that pearly gates. And you know what we do when we don't see anybody. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> earthquake. <laughs> I, don't, I still earthquake. You know, I still say earthquake. We had an eclipse. A few days later, mommy's telling you to open your eyes. Pay attention. Look and see what's going on, okay? She has some forgetfulness. The dementia was kicking in. Oh boy, was she telling the truth and she told it wrong. It was wrong. <laughs> um, a lot of people, y'all may not understand this. My sisters understand it. I was last in the B word. Yes, you were. Yes, I was. But even the nurse turned around and looked at me and said, did she just call you that? I said, yes, she did. <laughs> that was the last, I'm the last. I got it, I got it. <laughs> you know, we were with her throughout the whole time in the hospital. We never left her side. Went around the clock. She was ready and she was done to the fact that we didn't under, myself and the nurse that was in the room didn't realize the alarms machine stopped. We didn't notice it until we looked at the IV and seen that there was no trip. Y'all know who turned it off, right? All the machines was cut off. There was only dashes. There was no numbers. And the oxygen machine, you know you have to turn that. It was off. Everything was off. And she went in peace. And she enjoyed herself. She had a good time. Um, I could just have so much to say about her that I'd be standing here till tomorrow. <laughs> um, but she, um, thank everybody for everything that was done. Great design of Baptist Church. Those are cronies. <laughs> Those are cronies. You know, um, everyone in the neighborhood, not a prop they right there with moms, right there. I have friends that only met my mother once and thought she was the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you know, very nice, very, very, very lovable person. Very person that just, she cared. She did a lot of caring, but don't test her. <laughs> Not test her. Oh, it comes out. <laughs> Um, but she's, she's in a place, she's resting, she's enjoying, she's had her time, she's had her time. And just think of her in your prayers, you know, you hear a song, come on, yeah, that was her song, you 
know. Um, she's just, she's there. And she's going to be there and in our hearts for the rest of our lives, no matter what. So until we meet again, Mom, I send you on your journey. And enjoy. Amen. Thank you. Give us a minute. We want to just go over these mics for a second. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. All right. All right. Clap your hands, everybody. Let's just do something else. Yes, it comes and goes. All right. We're going to do the best we can do. Amen. And we just, we're going to get it together. We're going to get it together. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We are going into our. As a matter of fact, I'm encouraged. Amen. Because there's some things we got to do. And we are far from done. Amen. We are far from done. All right. So look here. Uh, we're going into um, our open tribute. Amen. So I want to talk to you for a minute about open tribute. This is the opportunity where you get to just express memories Amen. Talk about things you remember and be a blessing to the family with good memories. I love this part because we get to hear experiences. We get to hear good moments. Sometimes things that no one else knew about or things that everybody knew about. We get to just share. The problem is, is you can't tell it all. Amen. Thank you. I'm getting help in here. I'm getting help. This is also where you kind of hit it and quit it. Amen. What makes it real good is when you can come up here, tell what's on your mind real quick, and then give up the floor so someone else can tell what's on their mind real quick. Not when you give a 15-minute dissertation, and we were glad to see you come, and glad to see you go. And the last thing I want to do it's come up here and say, ma'am or sir, I appreciate you, ma'am, but you, you got to get this mic up. Everybody is asked to stick to a minimum, a maximum of two minutes. All right? A maximum of two minutes. So let's be respectful, because we can't say it all. When we get to the repast, you can finish. You remember what I was talking about? You can say, let me finish that one. Let me finish. So you have plenty of time to tell it at the repack. But here, you, if, if you only got two minutes to start and finish. All right? All right, all right. And we're going to start with Miss, uh, with Mother Willa, uh, Wilhelmina Haskett. Everybody want Mother up here. Come on, Mother. Amen. Mother is first. Amen. Mother Wilhelmina Haskett. Praise the Lord, Mother. Come on, Mother. Come on, Mother. You take your time. You... Yes, ma'am. All right. Here's your bike, Mom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I'm Muslim the Haskell. I'm the greater Zion Baptist Church. Bishop Jamal Moore is our pastor. We want to come to say goodbye to our sister. Sister Cox, we've known for over 50 years. She was in Zion, a very active person. She didn't sit down. She let me know that she's there to work. Anything that you wanted her to do, all right, she was there. So we say thank you for her life. Thank you for all that she has done for us. We honor her. We honor her. And we love her. We still love her spirit because we know that Sister Cox did what God told her to do. Yes. Sister Cox was a deaconess in our church. She was a nurse. She was a Sunday school teacher. She was a mother, the president of the mother's board. Sister Cox did not sit down. She was a worker. And we say thank you, God, yes. for her spirit, for her willingness to work. And we want you to know that we have draped a chair in our church in honor of her. Amen. We honor her. And we say thank you, Lord, for all that she has done for us. So we're going to have the unveiling on Mother's Day. So if you want to come on by, come on by and join us and the unveiling of this chair. Thank you, God, for her life. The songs that made the work I do speak for me and say thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God for mother. Amen. All right. Amen. So that means the floor is open. The first one to break the ice has broken it and done a great job. So who wants to be next? Oh, come on. All right, now after that, let's pop like popcorn. Just come grab the mic, amen, until the time is up. This might take me 20 minutes. Oh, wait, no. No. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm always playing. <laughs> I'm always playing. Okay, what I got to say is that, in my opinion, I had the greatest mother on the planet. In my opinion. My mother worked hard for us. She um she was something else is all I got to say. I'm gonna talk about her husband Thomas Cox. He was great. I'm gonna talk about my sisters, Adrian, Shell, Therese, and Sandra. Who took care of mommy. Who took care of mommy. They really did. They did an excellent job. They took care of mommy. I wasn't always still around, but uh, when mommy came calling for me, I did I came. So all I wanted to say, I wanted to rest in peace. I know she's happy now. I know she's up there with Tommy, Kevin, Jackie, yeah. and like, uh, who mentioned that earlier? They went up there rocking, trees rocking around, and it caused that earthquake. Thank you all so very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you all so very much for coming, and God bless everybody. My name is Sean, and my Aunt Lois, that's my father, Alva. That's how I met my father when I was young, because my Aunt Lois and my Aunt Novella, my Aunt Andrea's mother, told me that that wasn't my godfather, that was my father. Because I always thought that was my godfather. And she was like, boy, you look just like him, that is not your godfather. <laughs> I was like, that's what I was told. Then they finally told me that was my father. And that's how I met all the rest of them, everybody else. So whoever don't know me, that's my last aunt yes. from my father. And the rest of y'all is my family. Yes. Thank you. Sit down and rest a little while. Well, sit down, servant. Sit down. Sit down, servant. Sit down. Sit down and rest a little while. That's the way Sister Cox was. She, she was in the spirit. She said, we not no dead church. We a happy church. And that's the way she was. And that's the way I want to remember her. When I pick up the phone and call her, she said, child, I was going to call you, but I just could, couldn't remember. I said, don't worry about it. You in your 90s, you can do what you want to do. And she always laughed. She said, you always tell me that. But I'm I miss her, 
and I missed talking to her when we went to her house to give her communion. She was so happy, and she loved her church, and she loved being in the church, but she said, I can't get there no more because the stairs. I can't go up and down the stairs. And she said, the children don't want me to go outside by myself. But that's just the way she was. She was in the spirit, and she loved the spirit. And, you, and to the family, stay encouraged. Stay together because she loved her family. Good evening, church. I'm Deacon McDonald from the Great Design Baptist Church. My pastor is Bishop Jamel M. Will Sr. Mother Carson is a no-nonsense lady. Amen. She didn't take that. She ain't got time for that. Amen. I remember when I first met her, she was a deaconess, and I was a deacon in training, and I had some wonderful thoughts and memories of Mother Cox. Mother Cox sought my wife to be a Sunday school teacher, and they bonded together. All I can say to you is that she's in heaven right now. I love her, and she's, she's the best. She's the best. Amen. 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 Walks with me as he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joys we share as we tarry there, none of has ever known. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I met Sister Cox in 1999 at the Great Design Baptist Church. That coconut cake was my best delight. <laughs> All right. Every time it was my birthday, she a made me a coconut cake. cake. Yes. And I enjoyed it. Yes. But we shared something in common. I found out that Mother. Cox's birthday was February 13th, January, January, I'm sorry, January 13th, which was also my wedding anniversary. And so we would talk about it all the time. But what I liked about her most was when I called her when she couldn't come to Zion anymore. And she said, child, I'm doing all right. Child, it is okay. You just keep on holding the faith. I miss your preaching, but you just keep on holding the faith. And I know that she has held the faith until she have left this life. Amen. I met Mother Cox at Greater Zion, and that's where I also met her granddaughter, Sade. And, you know, she welcomed me like her granddaughter because my grandmother was still back home. And it made me feel nice and warm, and I'm really happy to know that she had two other friends, and they were like the Golden Girls. Yes. Um, Mother Goldison yes. and <laughs> Sister Skinner. <laughs> and those three ladies made Greater Zion the best thing ever for us as children. So I'm really happy to know that they're back together right now. Shadi, I love you so much. And just know she's in a better place. Amen. All right? Amen. Amen. I just want to say, when, when you all say that um, Mother Cox was a no-nonsense person, mm -hmm. she never missed Sunday school. Never. So at that time, I was the Sunday school teacher. She used to come, call me up, say, come here, girl. And I used to go and see what she wanted, because you never disrespect that help. She'd feel my leg, want to know if I had, I had one. Stockings. stockings. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, but I have yep. one stockings, but they share. She said, because you know you don't come to church with those stockings. Right? Right. Yep. Right. Okay, I had that just share with Mother Cox. And she said, all right now. I just want her to know I have all my stockings. <laughs> 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 Well, it's cooler up here. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, my name is Lamont Pierce. Uh, my father, Oscar Pierce, was Lois's um, brother. And I um, was listening to what everybody was saying, you know. Aunt Lois was always there for you when you needed her. I remember when I was about 15 or 16 years old, 
me and a couple of my friends decided to go to Central Park like nine o'clock at night on bikes from Mount Vernon. And um, on the way down, we had an accident. One of my friends got hit by a car. So now it's like 12 o'clock at night and we had to go somewhere. So I called my Aunt Lois up, you know. And she, had, she probably hadn't heard from me in a year so. You know, and, and we're caught, I think it was. Yeah. And we all went over there and spent the night, you know. And, and that, was, that was exciting, you know. But Aunt Lois didn't play. You know, so I knew that I had to come up with a good story while I was there, you know. But she took us in. She let us spend the night. We ended up breaking a window in the house while we were there, you know. But um, it was a blessing. And then the next time I needed her was like maybe 25 years ago, my wedding. She made the wedding dresses for all the bridesmaids. And, and, and that was a blessing there. And I will always be grateful to her for that. And she will surely be missed. Thank you. Well, while my cousin's getting herself together, I'm cheese. If y'all don't know, I'm cheese. I'm, I'm the, uh, I'm the favorite <laughs> at, uh, all, at, at, at all the grandchildren. Um, you know, until this one came along, birthday twin. Now it was all about Sade. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried to John at that time too when I was giving her a bath. But anyway, <laughs> listen. My grandmother was just one of a kind. There was nobody like my grandmother, I'm telling you. I don't care where you went, everybody that, that met her from my church, from my friends, they're just like, whoa. I said, I told you, you, you got, when you come, when you go to 3459 Seymour Avenue, apartment 2C, you got to be on your, on your A's and B's, honey. Because, listen, they don't hold their tongue. <laughs> they, they tell you like it is, and that's just that. But there's one thing I want to know. Me, me and Jamel, who going to make the cakes? <laughs> who going to make the carrot cake? Who going to make the carrot cake? Who going to make the, the coconut pineapple cake? Come on. I got two words. I got two words for y'all. We got carrot, carrot cake. Carrot cake. Carrot cake. Uh-huh. My grandmother used to make carrot cake with her hand. Yes, she Love. did. Greater. Love. 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 What y'all know about frosting made out of uh, egg white? Egg white. Egg white. Come on, you bringing it back. They ain't doing that no more. Come on, Yo, My grandmother was amazing, man. And, uh, you know, I just, I just think back to the times like riding on her to church. You know, I'll be like as young, I don't know, three or four, standing in the back seat. My grandfather cruising in that car, in the blue, my grandmother right? in the, in the, in the uh, passenger side, Get and she telling me, sit down, boy, sit down, but I'm standing because this is the most exciting part of my week, <laughs> going to church, getting out and going to church. I mean, she, uh, you know, she made me a believer, you know, she took me to Sunday all school, all of us. she told me about God, yes. I mean, and, uh, you know, her house for a grandchild was just too amazing, like, right. Right. let me tell you, like, Christmases used to smell like pine trees, like the whole house. You know what I'm saying? No fake trees, real trees in the house, just for the grandkids. I try to stay up and look for the uh, person to, who's going to eat the cookies, and somehow the cookies always disappear by the morning, and I can never stay up and see who ate the cookies and drunk the milk for Christmas. So, I mean, like, her house, the house that she created was, was just amazing for a grandchild. For, the, for her daughters, she was a little more rough on them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And Everybody but room, monkey. And the other room was a little more rough on them. And my grandfather, she was a little rough, but he had it on her. Yeah. All he had to do was share the TV. But like, <laughs> like my grandmother, my grandmother, man, I got, you know, I, I appreciate all the great design love coming out, out you know, coming on out. Um, you know, one of the songs that, that really stood out to me, um, I used to, I remember even Shade was in the, in the, in the uh, singing it. Uh, Trouble Don't Last Always. Yeah. You know, that song really touched me, especially when I used to see Shade up there singing it. 
And um, I'm just grateful that you guys gave her a seat at Great Design. I'm sure that means a lot to her now and in heaven. And, um, you know, thanks for coming out and for all your support for the family. Amen. Amen. Are you ready now? Okay. Your turn. 94 years. Mm -hmm. I am who I am today because of my grandmother. Yes, I pray because of my grandmother. I believe because of my grandmother. I have faith because of my grandmother. I've excelled because of my grandmother. They say there's nothing like a grandmother's prayer, and that is true. There were moments when I know I was getting in trouble for something, and I would hear my mother, and I would see my grandfather and my grandmother. Well, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? And each and every time that they would save me, I would laugh. Not gonna lie, I would laugh. Um, because again, there's nothing like a grandmother. As I grew older, I saw changes in my grandmother that were one of a kind. Um, she would yell at me, curse at me, and forget that she did five seconds later. Um, but most of all, when my children came in this world, she kind of pushed me to the side. Listen, right? And she took them in as if they were her own. You couldn't do nothing to Layla or Kai without her having an input. Her man. <laughs> her, famous, her famous words were, did, did you, you feed him? him? <laughs> did you change him? Why is he crying? And for the life of me, we could never understand why. She couldn't just gather because he's a baby. Um, I can go on and on and on about memories. My grandmother introduced me to church. Thank you, Great Zion. Um, and even when I passed on and went to my home church currently, Solid Rock, she encouraged me to stay there and be there because that's where I belong. My memory is what my grandmother will always live in my heart. But the best memory out of it all is that we share a birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for that, I am forever grateful. While my birthdays will never be the same, I just got double reason to celebrate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love and miss her so much even through the arguments, because yes, we argued, <laughs> because she is I and I am her. But I'm you know, grateful for her. I am I'm thankful for her. I'm going to miss her. Ma, get your act together. I need my turkey wings. Um, yes, turkey wings. Yeah. Turkey wings. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell her, yes, I changed him. And yes, I fed him. <laughs> And I'll see you later. Grandpa, take care of my grandmother. I told you no, but. <laughs> God bless you. Anyone else, I apologize. We're not going to be able to allow you to come. Time will not allow it. I do apologize. This is why I asked for two minutes. We have about 40 minutes and we have to be going. We have to be at the, we have to be at the grave site by 1.30. And, and so we are very, very close to time now. All right, so I do apologize. But we are going to have to move on now. Yes. All right. So let's just clap our hands and we go to the next portion of the service. Oh. All right. So our cards and resolutions, Pastor Toby Reefer. On behalf of the family, we'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has sent cards, everyone that has sent anything that needed to be read. Um, we appreciate you. The family loves you. Um, unfortunately, as you just heard, due to our time constraints, we are unable to acknowledge everyone that has sent cards. But I would like to acknowledge um, there are a lot of relatives, family, close friends, um, Greater Zion. Um, we have cards from you. We have cards from, um, she was our mother emeritus. Um, she was our mother emeritus for our headquarters church, uh, our Flowing Oil Kingdom Assemblies International out of Providence, Rhode Island. Grandma Cox never missed a convocation. 
Amen. When it came time for convocation, she was calling her kids, telling everybody. She was calling Pastor Brown, trying to make sure that convocation hadn't changed. And she used, when we did it for seven days, she came for all seven. When we broke it down to five, she came for all five. And she would do all the services, and she had to have her white. You know, she would ask Archbishop, it was Apostle then, she would ask him. Now, we still, she calls him Junior. She, or Teddy Bear. And she would say, now we still, the white, I can still wear my white on Sunday, right? I know y'all gonna have on something else. <laughs> but we love her. So just to acknowledge, um, we have cards from Providence, Rhode Island. We have cards from Greater Zion. We have cards from several family members and friends. Just going to, I'm not going to read your cards. I'm going to acknowledge you by name. The family will further acknowledge you at a later time. To the Cox and Pierce family, this is from Lady uh, Bishop Jamel Moore Sr., Lady Raven Moore, and the Greater Zion Baptist Church. Amen. With sympathy to the Cox and Pierce family from the Missionary Ministry of Greater Zion Baptist Church. Amen. To the Cox and Pierce family with sincere sympathy, Deaconess and Nurses Ministry, Greater Zion, Baptist Church. Amen. Praying for you in your loss. With love and prayers, Church on the Rock Kingdom, Cathedral, Providence, Rhode Island. That is Archbishop John Joseph, a senior pastor. Pastor Carla Brown is the pastor. Amen. With heartfelt sympathy, this is from Lolly. With heartfelt prayers and sympathy from Cheryl and Cheryl Cambridge and family with love. To the family of Mrs. Lois Cox from Jerry's Pizza. <laughs> from Irene Sylvester. And Isaiah <laughs> Sylvester. <laughs> Our love always, Vern and family. With deepest sympathy, Dorothy, Curtis, Wanda, and Juni. And in sympathy and prayer, Love and God's blessings. It says Janie and family. Amen. We appreciate all of your wonderful cards. There is a resolution um, from Greater Zion Baptist Church. Unfortunately, we are cut for time, and either I'm being advised that I will have to omit it. But there is a church resolution that says, In loving memory of Mother Lois Cox. And it will be given to the family so that they can read it. Um, if they allow me to, I'll read it at the repast. Amen. Okay. Okay. All right. This is what we're going to do. We're going to give him 30, 30 uh, 60 seconds. Sister Kiara's coming as soon as he moves. Um, because he lives. All right, she's going to sing Because He Lives. Uh, then after that, the obituary will be read by Sandra Pierce. All right, Sandra Pierce will read the obituary. Okay, so we're going to go in that order. All right. Uh, after he's done. Um, then uh, Kiara's coming with Because He Lives, then the obituary by Sandra Pierce. That's our order. Amen. Uh, I think I'm not going Should I use the mic? I guess I use the mic. Hi, I'm Boo. I was one of the youngest grandsons, well, grandkids, until three of them came into this world. My sister's over there. Um, one of my memories of my grandmother was how me and my sister used to always go over there to be babysat. And every time she would yell at us, she would have no teeth in her mouth. So we just see that gum going, and we would make so much fun of her for it. But, no. So, you guys also mentioned all the cakes she's ever made, but 
sad to tell you I had my own special cake. So I had the pineapple upside down cake and that was always made for me and if I wasn't able to come around she saved it in her freezer for me so nobody cares about your cakes, I was a special one. Um, my grandmother was a very religious person so I was very lucky to have seen her before she officially was gone. It was a little hard, but I got the comfort of being able to, to talk to her for the last time, right? So uh, I asked her to stay, but obviously what happened happened. Um, but then I realized how selfish that was for the simple fact that I knew that she was not scared of dying because she knew she was going to be with the Lord soon. And I'm happy that she was able to go in a very peaceful way. So that's really all I had to say, to be honest. But, um, I'm happy that there's so many people that she's touched, and thank you for coming. And I hope you all let's safe travel back. So this hymnal was requested by the family. It is one of her favorite songs, and I pray that it blesses your heart. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he
That's the truth. I said, it's the truth. I didn't, I, it's the truth. You don't, I, don't know. I ain't never seen her ID a day in my life. I don't know. I only know it's Auntie Monkey, too. 30 years. And how long you been in my family? 30 years. I don't even know my Aunt Cookie is Aunt Cookie until I finally found her real name was Emma. <laughs> I didn't call you that. <laughs> well, I call you Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lois Pierce, Lois Jane Pierce Cox. Wow. She was born on Monday, January 13th, 1930, to Andrew and Martha Pierce. Both parents passed away many years ago. She was born and raised in Mount Vernon, New York. She attended Longfellow Elementary. Washington Junior High and A.B. Davis High School. When her mother took ill, Lois was the sole caregiver. She took care of the household and raised, raising of her brothers and sisters. Oscar Pierce, Alva Pierce, Novella Brooks, Andrella Greer, Crosby Pierce, who had all preceded before her. As her own family was growing, Lois moved to the Bronx, New York. During this time, she worked as, she worked as a domestic worker. During the holidays, she worked in the post office. She later met and married Thomas R. Cox. He passed away in 2001. Wow, Jesus. Wow. Lois enjoyed going to church. She became a member of Greater Zion Baptist Church. Within the church, Lois served on the usher board, the missionary board, as well as the deaconess. She always loved old school gospel. Her favorite songs was Because He Lived and His Eye is on the Sparrow. Yeah. Due to her ailments, Lois wasn't able to continue going to church. My sister. I was streaming for sorry, her. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I wrote it like I was talking. Sorry. <laughs> Lois was a no-nonsense person. She was known in the neighborhood as Mama Lois, Miss Lois, Sweet Baby, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> she was survived by her children, Joanne Ash, Raymond Pierce, Renee Pierce, daughter-in-law, Adrian Campbell, Oliver Campbell, son-in-law, Michelle Pierce, Montrese, Sandra, and Aunt Dora Pierce, her sister-in-law. Amen. Jacqueline White and Kevin Pierce gained their wings before her. She leaves 13 grandchildren, 23 great grands, and 13 great great grands. She has a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and many friends. Lois. Lois is now, she's with Yoey, is back with her family. We go from Yoey to Lois, Aunt Lois, Aunt Yoey. And ooh, so many Jane. more. Louis oh, Jane. her father, Louis her heart, Louis Jane. Louis Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one she talked about. Her dad. Yeah, y'all clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. All right, here we go. We have a hymn from uh, David Brown. This is my son, Mr. David Brown. Great and this is her great grand. Her great grand. Great grand. All right, let's try it. I don't know if you put her on. How's everybody doing today? You guys can hear me? I don't want to have to scream or yell or anything. I don't want to have to scream or yell or anything, but how's everybody doing today? I need a little bit of talk back. I need a little bit of crowd participation, okay? Let's, you know what I mean? It's, you know what I mean? It's a little dull in here, but it's a celebration, okay? So let's just, you know what I mean? I need a little bit of participation. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. How, many the, how many know that the Lord is able? He's came to the Lord of Lord. Regardless of what you're going through, right? Regardless of the pain, regardless of tragedy, death, or accident, He's still the same God, right? Yes. So regardless of what you're going through, you should not be silent, right? You should keep knowing who the Lord is and you should keep acknowledging him and keep your faith pushing regardless of how much it hurts how much you're going through he's still God that's in his will that's his purpose okay you Lord you are worthy and no one 
can worship you for me. No 
nowhere to be found. He is the true and the living God. Yes, he is. And we love him not simply for what he does, but we love him for who he is. Yes, he is. He's a real good God. That he is. He's a real good God. That he is. I have a lot of years with this family, which means that, with all honesty, there's so much to say, and I must be like you today. We cannot tell it all. So I must move as swift as I can. We are on a very strict time limit. So I need about 12 minutes or so of your time. Um, so, My name, for those of you who know me, is Lionel. E stands for Eugene. The last name is Brown, and I'm a junior. Uh, I'm married to Carla. Uh, for those of you who know her, you probably know her best as Cheese. <laughs> um, I have entered into the kingdom of God, which I am so grateful for. And for that, through consecrations and so many other things, apostolic succession and so forth, I received the Christian name that you will now know as John Joseph. But I've been a part of this family for like 30 something years. Mary Cheese, when we were teenagers. Uh, she was 16, I was 17. And we got married. We got married because we thought we were grown. looking into things that somebody should have told us not to look into. And uh, pop go to weasel. Cause the weasel gonna pop. <laughs> and uh, I was determined that my kids were gonna knock on one door and find both parents. I wasn't going to be a father who their children, who his children had to climb mountains and swim cross rivers to find their father. I made a promise to myself that I weren't going to be that kind of man. I didn't know all about Carla's life or Cheese's life, but I knew I wasn't going to be the one to mess it up. And so I decided to be whatever man I could be. And I manned up. And I took on responsibility. And from that, I was introduced to a family. who took me in, who loved me. I was still trying to find my way around things. I was a kid, a child. 17, you ain't grown. And if I can be honest with you, let's tell the whole truth. Even when you're 21, you are not grown. I know you think you're grown, but let's talk about it. 
until you're in your own place, paying your own bills. And have some maturity to your life. You are not as grown as you think. And sometimes you need people who don't care about your feelings to tell you the whole truth. You need somebody in your life that says, ooh, I know it hurt, but I had to be honest. You don't find a whole bunch of lowest coxes in this world who will love you but tell you the truth. When I met her, she loved me. I wasn't judged because of my age. Honestly, I wasn't sat down and threatened. I kind of was expecting that. I didn't get that from nobody in this family. I found out how popular cheese was. I found out I was pretty deep. <laughs> I said to myself, holy cow. I done married somebody that means something in this family. I better, I better get this thing together. But this family took me in. I'm going to give you a scripture, but I just want to tell my, little, my story. After a while, I became Teddy Bear. I took care of Carla Brown. I did everything I could to make sure she was good. Indeed. That the children were good. Indeed. And I think grandma loved me for that. Mm -hmm. Grandma never got a report that I put my hands on her. Mm -hmm. Grandma never got a report that Carla Brown's lights were off. Mm -hmm. Carla Brown was catching a bus and I was driving. I have so much respect for Grandma. I call her and talk with her. And she come down to convocations and spend time with us and love on us. I remember one incident and then I'm done. I'll give you a scripture. I'll preach about seven minutes and I'll be done. We had a son that died. Grandma left New York to come to North Carolina. Our aunts came that could come. My mother-in-law, they showed us so much support and so much love. I want to just say to this Pierce family, I love all of you. Absolutely, man. absolutely. I was 17 years old when I became part of this family. And I love all of you. Absolutely. And I appreciate all of you. And I thank God for all of you. And I want to say to all of you, I know things get hard, but this is one of the most trooper families I have ever met. And better days are sure to come. I love all of you. And I thank God for all of you. Let's get to this word. Let me just give you about seven minutes of good word. And then I'll be out the way. Let's get something very familiar. Uh, there's a passage of scripture that's very, very familiar. Uh, John, the, fourth cha the 14th chapter, verse 1. Let's read this. It's very familiar. I want to just share something with you. Uh... Deanna waved me down after about seven, eight minutes. It says this. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. 
Uh, the genesis of the text is uh, John, St. John, the 14th chapter, starts at verse 1. That's the genesis. The foundation of our text is going to be that verse 2 and that verse 3. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. I want to talk to you for the next seven minutes from the subject I have a place to go. That's what I want to talk to you about for the next seven minutes. I have a place to go go. Uh, one of the things that we should talk about in the little time that I have left is that it is important that we recognize and understand uh, that this journey that we are on uh, here is not permanent. Uh, it is a fact just as sure as I stand before you that there is more thinking that we should be doing. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that our minds are always moving. Our minds is always turning. We're always thinking about something. Uh, the, our thoughts are always turning because, look, somebody got to pay some bills. We're always thinking about how to get bills paid. We're always thinking about how to take care of the children. We're always thinking about what we're going to do about the house. We're always thinking about what the car needs. I got to get an oil change for this crazy car. We're always thinking about something that has to get done. But the truth of the matter is that we need to start thinking about what's going to happen when we leave this world. Because the truth is there are some things that we cannot change there are some things that are going to happen watch this and you and I cannot prevent it but what we must do is prepare for it and so life itself uh, actually gives you the opportunity uh, to make choices and decisions and so what I'm trying to explain to you is that one of the choices you have to make is how you prepare yourself watch this for your exit Brown preach, I will for a few minutes. You have to prepare yourself, watch this, for your exit. Because the truth is, is that sooner or later, watch this, just as sure as you made an entrance, you're going to have to make an exit. And the truth be told, if I can help you, is that you always must be preparing yourself uh, for your exit. You've got to be preparing yourself for where? you're going to spend the eternity because the truth is God has made a way for us to actually spend eternity with our creator can you imagine that that's powerful can you imagine that can you imagine that the God that formed you the God that made you the God that breathed life into you has actually made Preservations, reservations. He's made a way, actually, for you to spend the rest of eternity ah, with him. The only catch is, watch this, is that you got to live a life that's acceptable to him. If you can live a life that's acceptable to him, then God will actually fix it so you can spend eternity with him. I wonder, I got to get out of here, but I wonder, I wonder. If you actually been doing anything to prepare your life to spend eternity with him. I believe the Bible, the Bible, the Bible declares that they actually have a talk with Jesus. This is what I like. They have a talk with Jesus. And Jesus said, listen to me, y'all. I can't stay here with y'all forever. He said, but I'm going to do something that is profound. Because watch this, I've been training you. This is what I like when some of y'all said, ah, 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 I've actually, the reason why I have faith is because of grandma. The reason why I went to church was because of grandma. And now I have my own church. 
church and grandma thank you because the Bible the Bible declares that he told his disciples he said I'm going away for a little while and I'm going to prepare a place for you uh, and when I go away to prepare a place for you I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself and God do it and what I came to tell you is is that my Cox has leave it for a long time she's leave it and she's warned she's taught you how to live she's taught you how to love God she's taught you how to trust God it wasn't all about the cake she baked but it was more about the life she lived she taught you how to love God she taught you how to trust God she told you what to do that was right but watch this she also taught you how to do it but she was strict on how she did it because you gotta learn how to stay straight you gotta learn how to stay loyal you gotta learn how to stay focused and if i learn how to stay focused then anything that the devil brings my way i won't be then i won't trust i won't fall apart something real quick I'm going to have some believers and some unbelievers but that's life y'all got to find your own path stop letting everybody tell you if you don't do it this way you're going to hell y'all listen to me y'all listen to me I need two more minutes I'm going to let you go because we got to get out of here whatever else is on that program we can't do it I'm sorry we got seven eight minutes but auntie please listen to Junior Years ago, yes. my mother-in-law, we, we had church at a hotel. My mother-in-law came to church. Yes. At that time, we believed the only way to get saved and get the Holy Ghost, uh, mama. listen because, listen mama. because, is that we all had to get on our knees at the oh, altar yeah. oh, yes. and we had to tarry. Yes. And when tarry, we talk about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes. 
If you didn't get it that way, you didn't have it. That's what we were taught. But that is a rumor and it ain't the truth. I don't care what y'all say to me. To carry means to wait. Do your own study. It means to wait. The Bible says they went in the upper room and they tapped or they waited. Over 120 people was in the upper room. They were making choices and decisions. They chose another apostle in the upper room. Do your study. And when they were all for one accord. When they all finally agreed on what God wanted. You know why we don't grow? Because we don't agree. We don't agree. You don't know why he doesn't come? Because we don't agree. You know why he don't make change? Because we don't agree. He mad at that one. 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 He cannot come. And when they were all on one accord, that's when he came. Not because they were telling him, he wasn't calling in that Jesus, 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 Jesus. 120 people calling his name, coming into one agreement at the same time. If you ever tarry, folks fell asleep on the altar. Yeah. 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 Folks was watching you on the altar. Now, honey, you ain't never about the Holy Ghost like that. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Yes. All it is, Auntie, is an open confession between you and God. I believe you died. I believe that you're the son or that you're the living God that sent your son for my sins. Will you be my father, my savior? Because now I'm willing to be your child. Will you come into my heart? I said, that's really how you accept God. I was at a hotel and the Lord said that to me. He said, you make it too hard for people to come to me. He said, all they got to do is openly confess. The Lord said that to me. That's how my Jackie got saved. That day. And then you learn how to clean your life. He said, you sanctify yourself and I will sanctify you holy. Not H-O-L-Y. Get me your gates, O-L. Which means I can for you what you can do for your because I drink. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. Y'all ain't got like this, Bishop. Because I'm going to the repast and then I'm going back to Rhode Island. But I'm going to tell y'all some truth. Show me in the scriptures where drinking is actually the sin. The sin is I'm in trouble with you church folk but I ain't scared of y'all. The sin is not drinking. The sin is over the The sin is over drinking. When you become drunk, he said drunkenness is a mockery. Why does the Bible say drunk and be merry? Only one interpret the scriptures properly. I know I just got in trouble. Because you know what we do? We judge everybody. We judge everybody. When the truth is, God is the greatest judge. We don't turn people away from church. Drinking don't work for everybody. If you can drink and all the time get drunk, guess what? You shouldn't drink. But if a person can drink casually, leave them alone. Just because it don't work for you, don't criticize the next one. That's what keeps them from God. 
I know some of y'all looking at me like, I don't know about him. But I do not preach at your church. I preach on the cross of this world. I've been overseas from Africa and everywhere. I'm going to tell you the truth. What you need to do is study it. Stop letting watch it on me no harm. Stop preaching what your great grandma showed you. And study something for yourself. Some of y'all preaching what you was told. And not preaching what you know. You preaching what you was told. You're not preaching what you study. Don't get mad at me because what you was told. Get mad at me at what you study. After you study it, then come see me. After you read it in Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, then come talk to me. My time is up. In the hands of the funeral director, we're going to follow her instructions. We only had till 1 o'clock. But I'm trying to save lives. I don't want nobody leaving this world missing God because some Christian judged them and told them they couldn't be saved. Your relationship with God becomes personal. He will clean out of you what he don't want you to have. Yes. We're grateful for Archbishop Joseph for his words of inspiration, encouragement, and truth. In. Grateful for the musicians and all those who participated to make this a celebration of life for your dearly beloved. We're grateful for you who attended via live stream and those who are physically here in the chapel. If you have not yet had, had an opportunity, I do encourage you to go by and quit sign the book so the family will have a means of contacting you at a later date to personally express their gratitude and gratefulness for your ministry of presence and support during this their season of bereavement. The final disposition for your daily beloved will be at the Kensico Cemetery in Valhalla, New York, located at 273 Lakeview Avenue in Valhalla. For those who wish to accompany her to her final disposition, ask that after you promptly greet your neighbor, that you go to your cars and turn on your flashing lights so you may be identified as with our party so we may travel safely together. Before we depart this place, I would like to offer a final view for those who do wish to have a final view of Miss Lois. And to the family, I would like to say on behalf of McCall's Rockwood Funeral Home, we again extend our condolences to you and let you know that we have considered it an honor that you have chosen us to care for your loved one. And in the coming days, if we can be of any further assistance, do know that our hearts and our doors are open unto you and we'll be more than gracious to extend ourselves to help you meet your needs. And I would ask that you remain in place until you follow the direction of myself or my colleague. May God bless you as you continue to celebrate and continue to live out the legacy. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.